So uh, thank you all for coming to this session. Uh, this is the uh, last session of the games and uh, the esports and online games session. Um, and um, the, it's a pleasure to uh, introduce uh, Amin Isa, who's uh, founder and war chief of science at Mobilitics. And he's going to talk about uh, Mobilitics um, and player analytics in the industry. So um, without further ado. Thank you, Maggie, for the introduction. I think uh, when we, you know, start a company, we just made up whatever titles made sense because I'm not really a title person, and everyone got excited. So, you know, we have uh, a war chief of technology, and then in each division, we have like, you know, in the engineering division, they're like blade master, grunt, warrior, but in the research division, it's like farseer, mage, that kind of, you know, depending on uh, the 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 place they work in, so more ma magic oriented, but. Uh, to start a little thing. I'm just going to start today. I, I wanted to say I'm going to keep this uh, very uh, conversational. So there is a chat. If you want to type a question or whatever, uh, we'll treat it like Twitch chat and I'll, I'll, I'll be able to look at it pretty easily. And uh, I'll, when I reach a stopping point, I'll, I'll answer. Um, and I won't let the topic veer away from what you asked too fast. Um, I'm just going to start a little bit. I'm going to talk about myself and how how I got to this point, uh, uh, what series of happy coincidences led led here. And then I'm going to show a little bit about our platform, what it is that we do, some of the research that we've done um, briefly. And uh, I'm going to talk about kind of some of the things that we've learned that I'd love to share uh, with you guys. Um, so first, a little bit about me. Uh, I uh, was, uh, I grew up in Lebanon and I had a very, uh, you know, a strict uh, family in the sense that uh, school was the most important thing. Somehow we discovered a Nintendo when I was young and my father was smart enough to make that the carrot on the stick. So basically whatever we did at school, as long as we got good grades, which to him meant hundreds and the highest grades in the class, we could play video games. Luckily back then video games were very different and the old school games were much, much harder than uh, today. Uh, today, and And so, it was much harder to be good at those games than it was to be good at school. Um, and so uh, we fell in love, me and my brothers with the, with the gaming system played way too much. Um, and uh, by the time I got to high school, I was uh, 14 going on 15 uh, and uh, going into college. Uh, my dad asked me like in our country, we don't have like, you can't choose all these different beautiful majors. He, he said, do you want to be a doctor and engineer? I'm like, I mean, I don't know. I want to help people, so I'll be a doctor. So I went on to study medicine, and I, I quickly realized in college uh, I had a little more freedom, so I played a lot more games, and I, I still got good grades, but just I wasn't, like, in a regime or anything sitting under my parents' home. But uh, I understood that I didn't want to memorize anatomy and every part of the body and everything. It just was very boring to me. It felt like you could just open uh, the web, look that up. And, and learn that as you needed. Um, and so I eventually got into med school and decided not to go down that path. And I said, well, I'm gonna try some engineering and I wanted to mix the two. And uh, I uh, applied for a PhD in biomedical engineering. And uh, my, my thought process was that I would be able to make uh, bionic appendages because they were in games and they were cool, right? So I could uh, put a gun on a soldier or someone, make a tool for someone, <laughs> right? I just thought it was a really good idea at the time. And I was, I was 19, mind you, and a <laughs> very fantastical uh, person. Um, I got into a PhD program at, at Mayo Clinic. Um, uh, and uh, it was, uh, I don't know if you've uh, been up to Rochester, Minnesota, but there's nothing to do there. And in the winters, it's extremely cold, minus 35 wind chill. So um, naturally, while exploring this biomedical engineering and building a bionic arm, I realized that digital signal processing also was not for me. And I realized that in the winters, long winters, there's nothing to do but play video games, which coincided with the launch of World of Warcraft. And I played, I got a PhD in World of Warcraft, you could say, for my first few years there. I was playing 16 hours a day a lot of the time, and I would take uh, uh, all my uh, uh, work from the lab and I would do it at night. So I'd play all day with my guild friends. I'd go late at night. I'd do my research experiments, submit the results by email. And I'll kind of avoid human interaction so I could interact with people I'm playing video games with and not waste time at work. Uh, eventually that happened so much that we got sponsored and I played professionally for Team Fanatic. Um, if you're familiar, they're an esports team. 
And uh, for, I did that for a couple of years and it kind of, um, I started to burn out. Uh, I was burning the candle and I was just, I didn't want to play World of Warcraft anymore. And I realized what was really fascinating to me was how different players were, how different the really good players were. So I was extremely analytical. I was the guy who went to the tournaments and I would pull out a, a sheet of paper. I had written down everyone's profile statistics and I would share that with everyone on the team. But the person I thought was the best player on our team and probably the best mage in the world, that person was, um, he never looked at those things at all. He had a very strong instinct on how to play and decision-making gained through experiential uh, understanding of the game. And so what I, what I decided was I wanna be able to understand these differences. I went back and I finished my PhD and I focused on human physiology with a goal of going into performance and understanding performance. So I started with neurophysiology and then later I was lucky enough to join a lab that focused on performance physiology, primarily in extreme uh, environments. Uh, so mountain climbers, air force pilots, deep sea divers. And I was very lucky to be able to study these people in these environments. We outfitted F-22 fighter jet uh, pilots with uh, geared to take heart rate and, and oxygenation while they were flying. We did lab studies to emulate that. We studied climbers on Everest. I got to go up there. Just a lot of crazy, really nice things. But but during, during that time, what I realized is that high performance across different domains is not so dissimilar. And it really hit me when we were studying pilots. We used to do this crazy experiment that we got funded for by the Air Force. But basically, we would outfit people with 16 different physiologic signals from um, uh, EEG, ECG, breathing, oxygenation, eye tracking, you name it. And we would have them play a video game that we had designed, simple reaction time game. And we would deprive them of oxygen while doing that <laughs> and till they till they're about to pass out. Now, now, mind you, we would test this on ourselves first. So it was it was safe. We wouldn't do stuff to people. But it was really funny to watch people's physiologic metrics kind of decrease preceding their performance in the game decrease. And so we're trying to build like leading indicators to monitor pilots. But I realized like a pilot's not very different than a gamer. They sit in a chair, they look at several different displays and, and audio and they synthesize all that information and they use a command console to, to make their decisions and inputs to change the course of action. And that led me to basically reaching out to some of the people in the esports field and going and sleeping in team houses, taking these eye tracking devices, taking uh, heart rate devices and measuring players. I published a video and a lot of good things happened and um, uh, really got a chance to talk with groups like Riot, but I could never uh, like get in and uh, couldn't make a career out of it. I was looking at it from a very high level uh, angle. Um, and that's what's interesting to me, right? The high performance. Um, so eventually I realized like, I really wanna get back into gaming. So I took sabbatical and that's where I met my co-founder at TwitchCon. And he was uh, if, uh, more from a business kind of product area. And he's just like, uh, he asked a question at the panel I was at, what about Moneyball for esports? And I'm like, well, this guy's just doing analytics. It's a fancy marketing word for analytics. And I, so I started to talk to him. He said, dude, that's really cool what you do. But like the average player is really simple. If you can just tell them they die too much, that's enough. And I'm like, no way. Everybody knows they die too much. Now, now, now remember, like I'm coming at it from like really good player. And so I couldn't see that at the time. And, you know, he would tell me like, if you could give people one button to press and they would become good, they would do it. I'm like, no, it's about the journey. People don't want to press one button button. But uh, today, more and more, I realized <laughs> that he's not wrong, right, as we go down this path. But uh, we sat down and we talked about how we could make a tool for everyone using data. And we and, and that's where Mobilytics was born. And uh, today we have over 4 million uh, players on our platform. And we've built a, a, a lot of cool stuff. And I'd, I'd love to kind of show you a little bit of, of what we've built. Um, let me share my screen. So, uh, I guess I'll replace this other screen if that's okay. Um, here we go. So this yes, is kind of do that. yeah. So this is kind of our uh, app, and uh, basically our goal was to build kind of the ultimate uh, gaming companion for players. So regardless of your skill level or your time investment, uh, we live in a world where um, uh, basically everyone who plays games, no one wants to suck. Right. Some people are more serious about getting better than others, but everyone wants to feel good and, and do, do well and feel that sense of mastery. The problem is that some of these games are really complex, have constant updates, and going to Google and searching is a, is a huge uh, pain for a lot of people. If you think about it, this, you see hundreds of search answers, you don't know which one to trust, you don't know if it's relevant to you. 
And why should players have to do that, right? We have, we know what you're playing, we know how you're playing, and we know when you're playing. And we can feed you the information that is relevant to you and, and not just relevant, but meaningful and impactful at the time when you need it. And I'll, and I'll, and I'll give you an example uh, real quick. So um, one of the features that we have is basically our uh, pregame. Um, I'm, uh, I, I'm not going to go through the whole demo because I'm not sure we have time. Um, I think we only have four minutes left. But basically, uh, it gives you information before the game, tells you about the players you're going against. And then after the game, we kind of sum up everything um, in a really cool way for you. But we built uh, a lot of these indexes that, that basically, so here's our performance index. This is kind of, we take, League spits out a bunch of stats and we, there's about 62 different metrics that come off of the API, but we gather data through our uh, game client, through OCR and uh, through uh, memory scanning. And we combine all of those different data points uh, through secondary tertiary metrics. We've got about 562 of those metrics and we classify them for the player into eight simple categories, uh, fighting, farming, vision, aggression, survivability, objectives, consistency, and versatility. You can see them here laid out in this spider graph and players can go in and see even more details like what's my early game farm like. They can see their progression. They can take on different challenges that let them improve this based on their skill level and they can read articles and guides based on where they're at so that they can learn and improve. So we've created uh, one of the thesis, founding thesis for this was that if you look at other sports, you have people who are uh, if you're going to the combine, you have a 40 yard dash, you have the bench press, you have the squat, these test specific physical skills like speed, um, uh, explosive strength, you don't have that in gaming. And we wanted to create kind of that layer, a standard for people to be able to understand gamers across uh, different games. And that's where we started. Um, so uh, that's kind of basically what the what the product does, right? Um, and so we've done a lot of research. Uh, I'm going to share my screen again. Uh, so stop. I'm going to show you, and I'm going to link this in the chat for those of you who are interested. But one of the studies we did, since our goal was to improve uh, player performance, right? Let's see. One of the studies we did was we took a bunch of players, and I'm going to link this in the chat so you can actually, well, as soon as I stop sharing, I'll link it because it doesn't let me right now. Um, but uh, basically, we took a a, a sample size of over a million players and all of them playing ranked in the North America region. And we compared the players who used our platform to those who didn't to see how well they progressed, right? And so basically um, uh, what, I, and I don't know if those of, you, those of you who don't know, but League of Legends has one, and most online games, but League is like really big because there's over a hundred million people play. And I, I think like 11 to 12 million play ranked on Western servers, uh, but, Basically, you have progression from bronze, uh, actually iron now, to challenger, and it's graded, and people climb ranks. And it's a big deal for people to go and play and keep climbing and, and rank up. And so uh, a lot of ranked players, some of them seek tools to help them do that. And so we compared players who played ranked and didn't use our tool. Maybe they're using another tool, right? And, and the people who um, uh, used our tool. Uh, and we used kind of our uh, telemetry on our platform through Mixpanel. And we used the API to just look at all ranked players uh, in League of Legends. And we found that people who use just just use our platform use climb 27% more than people who don't. And then we also delineated that by uh, the rank that they're in. So basically, if you if you look, people who are in a lower tier, it's easier for them to climb, it, which which proves the point that it's easier to give advice to people who suck than it is to give people who are actually pretty good, right? And just to give you an idea, people who are in silver and gold are actually pretty good at the game. These are very complex games and difficult to master. And when you talk about people who, a person in diamond or challenger, they're about a hundred times better than someone in silver or gold. And then you talk about someone in, in challenger versus diamond, they're a lot better than the person in diamond. So it's, it's kind of like that 80% rule, like with 80% of the, uh, with, with some effort, you can get to better than 80% of people. But as soon as you get to that top part of the curve, it's much harder to get much better, right? You have to put in a lot more effort. And like a pro player is a, a lot better than someone who's in challenger most of the time. So really uh, breaking down here, uh, people who use the platform more frequently even, they climbed 47%, 42% uh, more, right? And one of the things we did is because, well, we couldn't, there's there's a selection bias. Anyone who's playing, uh, who's who's using our platform is predisposed to improving. Right. So what we tried to do is say, 
let's look at all the people who signed up on our platform, but didn't use it because they were interested in using a platform to improve. They may have used another platform. And we kind of used that as a control group. And we still found that uh, basically uh, there is a, a good difference uh, between people who did that and not. I think it's uh, 20 21%. Um, but uh, the point is, is that we did a large study. And, and that's one of the beauties of working on games is there's a ton of data, I'm sure a lot of you guys know. And so you can really, I remember Riot gave a presentation and said, we don't look at significance because our sample size is so large that it doesn't, it doesn't matter, right? We're way beyond significant. So, so that's kind of uh, a link to the study here. That's one thing we did. The other thing that we did is we studied, uh, we used eye tracking to coordinate the way people are looking with the way they play in the game. And we did a, we did a, we released a product that adds on to that, basically tells you your map awareness, your um, uh, your ability to uh, perceive fights, your tunnel vision, a lot of really cool stuff that are very good. The, the problem was that not many people own an eye tracker. So it was a hit with pro teams and it was not a hit with the average player. And when, when you think about um, uh, our platform, uh, serving pros is kind of like my wish a lot because I love digging into top performance, but there's only so many players, so many teams, and they only have so much of a budget. And so we have to work. We, one of the things we learned is we have to work with the average player. And that brings us to probably the biggest lesson. And then I'll, I'll shut up because I don't know how much time I have left. I think I'm already over. But um, uh, basically what we've learned is that there's a lot of players and everyone wants to be great and win, but not everyone has the desire to improve. Most people don't. And the best way I can explain it to you is it, to look at it like the fitness industry. If you ask anyone, do you want to be fit? Do you want to have a great body? You know, do you want to be summer ready? Everyone says yes. And tell them, okay, you got to wake up, you got to do 100 push ups, 100 crunches, go for a run. And you've got to eat these foods today. You can't eat the stuff you usually eat. Half of those people churn out. They just say, I'm not going to do that. No way. The half that stay, probably within a week, you'll lose more, with another week, you'll lose more, and so on, they drop off. Very few people stay till then. And it's exactly the same thing. You tell a person when they're playing, like one of the biggest problems we had when we started is we tell everyone like, this is what you're bad at. You have to go and improve your farming so that you can get better because you're not getting enough resources in this game. They're like, dude, you don't understand. It's not my farming. I'm not, it's not, I'm, I farm okay. It's my teammates suck or something like that. And, or I'm not gonna sit down and practice hitting uh, creeps. I wanna go kill people. Right, so not enough people are in the game. <laughs> uh, um, uh, not enough people want to do the hard work so that they can be really good and 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 get to challenger or whatever rank they get. And and so that's taking us on a journey to broaden the appeal of the platform, to focus on how people can learn better, how they can get the information they need when they need it, and and maybe be good in the moment rather than improve over time. And then gradually, some of those people convert to like, oh, I like winning. I like mastery. So I'm going to dig deeper. But a lot of people are kind of at the far end of the spectrum and, it, and they may never get there. And we have to be okay with that as, as a business, right? And uh, I think it's been a really interesting journey for myself, learning how people consume and uh, process information. And games are such a beautiful environment for learning. And these games are really, really complex. And one of the biggest messages to me that uh, I, I would love to continue to work on throughout my life is that I learned everything, well, not everything, but the large majority of things through games in my life. And I've met people who've uh, started really great companies in the field and have said like, I learned everything about business playing FIFA football, not, not FIFA, football manager, right? And so they have a lot to teach us these complex games and, and, and the way they're set up is uh, okay. Time is up, so um, uh, I'll leave that for the questions. Sorry, Maggie. No problem. Um, so I think we have time maybe for one question. Uh, if anybody has a question, I I have several, but uh, I really like the um, uh, the your work kind of embedding kind of understanding the players and figuring out the humanistic aspect of how you build all of these systems to kind of cater to the. Um, uh, the player's needs. Um, it's kind of interesting. Any questions? You can also type it in the chat.
Okay, so if not, I'm going to ask a question that probably, hopefully, there is going to be a brief answer to this. Um, so you, did, you talked a lot about um, the technology and how you're using it with uh, different, uh, different people, but you didn't talk about what exactly the systems underneath are. Um, so I'm wondering if you can just speak briefly on, on that. Yeah, so I'm not going to talk about the engineering systems for the actual platform, but more like what we do from a data perspective. So League of Legends has an API where you get a bunch of different uh, metrics, like how many kills, how many deaths, how much gold did you get, how many wards did you place, that kind of stuff. Just I'll use League as an example because it's easy to understand. We we get that information and then we take we contextualize it. So the the thing about League is that if you have there's 150 champions in the game and each team picks five champions. Um, if you took the exact same game where the same five champions versus the same five champions, which is rare, and then you took the exact same minute in time, the minute 10 in the game, and the goal difference between the two teams was exactly the same, the game can be completely different depending on which player has the goal difference. So contextualizing data is very important. So we, we, we gauge it based on the time in the game that uh, these, these kills happen, these deaths, the surrounding environment. And then we create metrics and talk about how aggressive is this player or, and how good are they at playing from behind? How good are they playing from ahead? How well do they farm in the early game? How far well do they farm in the late game? And we synthesize all of that to give players a really good indication of their skill and power level. And then we use those metrics to uh, create uh, basically buckets, thresholds, points, and feed it into machine learning algorithms so that we can say, okay, this is the type of information that is relevant to this player. They play these type of champions. This is their play style. This is the recommendation that would be meaningful to them. And we've made a lot of mistakes. And so we've learned over time, like this is, uh, you know, that we continue to learn and evolve those algorithms. Does that kind of answer what you were looking for? Yeah, yeah, it does. Um, so I think we're going to uh, move on to the next um, the next talk. And thank you so much, I mean, for making the time. And uh, if you can stay with us, maybe people will have other questions. Um, and there's also a gather town after that, too, so you can meet other people, too. Thank you so okay. much for the talk.